seats. I'd like to get started. I'd like to call to order the Local Emergency Planning Committee meeting for Tuesday, October 2nd, 2018 at 10.05. Um, we have a lot of um, neighboring communities, LEPCs, that we've invited today. We also have with us Under Secretary Murray. Um, we've got a short agenda um, before we get into that part of the meeting. Um, usually we start off with a welcome. Uh, so I'm going to start with the committee to introduce themselves. Uh, my name is John Mulvihill. I'm the Emergency Management Director and Chairman of the LEBC for the Town of Weymouth. I'm Charlotte Jenkins, Deputy Director of Weymouth Emergency Management. Yeah, Pat McMurray, Undersecretary with the Executive Office of Public Safety. Uh, Peter Ostrowski, State Fire Marshal. Keith Stark, Weymouth Fire Chief. Dan McCormick, the Director of the Weymouth Health Department. Matthew Brennan, Weymouth Health Department. Jen Pompeo, Weymouth Police. Good morning, James Mannion with the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency. Uh, Jonathan Toast, Citizen Rep. Joan Kuperzak, Emergency Preparedness Manager, South Shore Hospital, and Brian Pomodoro, EMS Rep for South Shore Hospital. Mary. Mary Heinrichs, Community TV. And I'd like to uh, extend the courtesy to our neighboring towns if um, Braintree would like to introduce themselves. Oh, we won't get it. I'm Bob James, Director of Emergency Management with Stavage. Jim O'Brien, Brady Fire Anyone else from Brady? And Quincy? Bob Gillen, Police Marine Unit, Representative Chief Keenan. Thank you very much. And Hingham? Uh, Steve Murphy, Hingham Fire Chief and Emergency Management Director. Welcome. Uh, and uh, present is uh, Mayor Hedlund from the Town of Weymouth. Uh, first item on the agenda is uh, approval of the minutes from the June 19th meeting uh, that should have been sent out with everybody's packet. Um, there's copies there if anyone needs, and when you're ready, I'll entertain motions. I make a motion to accept. Second. I have a motion to accept by Joan, second by Charlotte. Um, any additions, deletions, uh, I'll accept. Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? <clears throat> okay, we can enter the minutes into the record, get those to the town clerk. Um, review of hazardous materials incidents. Matt? Uh, the health department hasn't responded to any new hazardous material incidences since our last meeting. Okay. Uh, the only one that I'm aware of was an incident at the high school, which escalated and de-escalated as fast as it escalated. Uh, the Ch Chief Stock and I had a couple conversations on it, but there was no need for further involvement. So it's been a pretty, pretty quiet summer hazmat-wise. Um, next item of business is a report from Matt Brennan and a discussion <coughs> of the compressor station public safety concerns. So I, I'd like to thank everyone and McMurray for coming today and thank you very much. This is great. Um, I think this is the first time that we've really been able to sit down and discuss public safety concerns of the proposed compressor station. This is really, this is step one um, for us uh, as a community to voice our concerns. Uh, as you know, uh, Governor Baker uh, back in uh, July of 2017, uh, put together uh, a letter to uh, our mayor, uh, Robert Hedlund, and which stated that, you know, the public should have greater input um, in this, in the threat of this compressor station coming to Weymouth. So, you know, hopefully as of, you know, this is the first step to that, and as of today, maybe there can be some greater public input. Um, or maybe in another meeting with the, the public's um, opportunity to voice some concerns. But just uh, from our concerns for a town, um, and, and my own concerns as a health department member and a member of the LEPC, I put together a small presentation, hopefully, um, that, you know, uh, I can go through, and then if there's anything that people want to add to it after that, we can go around the room, stay who we are. Um, and then just, you know, add to the things that I have here. Um, so this will give you a brief overview of the compressor station, you know, what it is, where it's going to be, um, and some of the concerns we have as a community. 
Good. Oh. So this is the location right here. This is 6 and 50 Bridge Street here in uh, Weymouth, located on Route 3A. Um, as part of this project, uh, Enbridge, um, or the, the gas company, has given us the area affected if there was uh, that happened in this area. this impact radius as an approximation of the extent incident six feet out calculated by pressure so there's 786 um, that could very likely burn or, um, you know, otherwise some event could happen if there was ever a meltdown of that facility. So basically what I'd like to do is look at, you know, what is in this 786 feet um, that Weymouth would have to deal with. These things happen. So like we saw in Andover and Lawrence, you know, emergency events do happen. And if you look around the country, in um, you know 2018, 2017, 2016, you see an event at a compressor station. Some of these events are major, um, and if you can see in some of these pictures, you know it's happened in um, it's happened in Pennsylvania, it's happened in California, uh, it's it's happened in other places. So you know, what if this happens here in Weymouth? What you know, what would happen? if it happened at that parcel of land. So let's look inside what's in that impact zone. So we have Route 3A, which is a major highway. Uh, if you look at uh, highway data from MassDOT, 32,000 people go over the Four River Bridge every single day. So, you know, it's a major thoroughfare for this community. Um, it's, it's how people get to work. Uh, not to mention you have the newly constructed Four River Bridge, which is a $244 million project that is now, um, it could be impacted if there was event, an event at that facility. Um, and not to mention, it puts in a lot of other um, hazards, like what happens if something happens if the bridge is up? What happens if um, you know, the bridge can't go up and down? How is that going to affect residents being able to flee the area? How is that going to affect transportation in the surrounding community? How is that going to affect trade if something happens to the bridge? Um, you know, even if it's not in the initial explosion, the heat that comes off of these things, um, it can easily, uh, you know, damage steel and damage other components of the bridge. Uh, which would impact Weymouth, Quincy, Braintree, all the Hingham, all the surrounding communities. Um, so, you know, that is one thing. Another thing is what's inside the impact zone is the Four River Energy Center. They have uh, a lot of hazardous materials. So, if you can see um, by this slide, there's 2.25 million gallons of diesel fuel. Uh, 200,000 plus um, cubic feet of compressed hydrogen gas, aqueous ammonia, sulfuric acid, uh, the list goes on and on and on. Um, not to mention there's other natural gas facilities, uh, metering stations, as well as sewerage, which is, a, you know, not a hazardous material, but a biohazard, um, you know, all within this impact zone, uh, which if you look at other compressor stations in the area, it is, you know, there's not this much going on uh, compared to what they have planned here in Weymouth. Also in the impact zone is the uh, MWRA uh, treatment plant, or the pump station, uh, which handles the sewerage for the surrounding communities, which is only 256 feet away. Uh, so if anything happened at that compressor station, you're, you would be 
potentially looking at Braintree, Holbrook, and Randolph and parts of Weymouth losing their ability to pump sewerage. So there would be a, you know, a local infrastructure uh, problem uh, because, of, because of the compressor station and, and event there. So that, again, is uh, a concern. Not to mention, if there, was an ever, if there was ever an event there, how do you get to the people at that MWRA plant? How do you get to um, anyone in that vicinity? Because it is on a peninsula. Uh, hope, you know, the people there, they, they would have no chance to get out. Um, you know, they would have to shelter in place, and, you know, who knows what would happen. So um, that is something that, you know, is, is lacking. Um, in the design. Also in the impact zone, of course, we have homes. So Weymouth has a high population density. So it's about 7,500 people per square mile. Uh, we have dense road traffic, intermittent road closures because of the bridge. So uh, there's, there's a lot going on in this area. Another concern is the lack of security. So I don't know if you've ever been to the site, but there is recreation property right next to the site. It has a deed restriction on it. So it's always gonna be recreation. This picture right here is a picture of, you know, someone along a path walking in this recreation area and the compressor station would be right in front of them. So because of the restrictions um, on this property, there's always gonna be a security concern. The property's no more than a stone's throw away. Um, so I don't know how you could possibly secure a facility like that, um, you know, being so close um, and always having public asset access to it. In addition, there's only one way in and one way out of that park. So if you were, um, you know, taking a walk there and there was ever an event, uh, there's one way in, one way out. So that's another thing. Um, that we have to look at as a town and how are we gonna save people in the event of a disaster there? Um, you know, it, it, there, there's a lot of different things uh, that we need to be concerned about. Now this is uh, Mass GIS. This is a hurricane, um, hurricane surge uh, inundation zone. So basically what this is saying in the worst case event, if there was a hurricane in this area, what type of storm surge would that area see? And by the mass GIS information, you can see that in a category two hurricane, um, you know, that area would likely be inundated with water. So, you know, here you are in an emergency trying to respond to a hurricane how would then the community have to, um, you know, respond to an event um, at the compressor station? You know, is this going to cause further failure of the station? Uh, what is, you know, the company or Enbridge's, um, how are they going to solve, you know, an issue at the plant, uh, at the compressor station when there's an active hurricane? or what's gonna happen uh, when a hurricane, are they gonna be able to respond? Are people gonna be able to get out? So that's obviously a concern as well. So, you know, part of this is you know, the companies have to have a emergency plan. Uh, they have to have a plan in case there's a natural disaster, in case, um, you know, there's a fire at the facility. But again, is any of the plans that they're going to have really going to rectify any of the things that we're talking about now? Um, you know, their emergency plan isn't going to be able to, you know, <laughs> make repairs to the Four River Bridge uh, to 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 fight, you know, 2.25 million gallons of diesel fuel that may be in the area, or, or you know, the lack of pump station and the lack of sewerage um, for, you know, multiple communities if, if an event happened. So, you know, 
even though they have an emergency plan, is that emergency plan really relevant to, you know, the concerns that we have as a town on what may happen because this facility is sited there? And basically, you know, how can Weymouth protect its citizens and the general public? We have a high population density. We have, a, you know, a lot of people on the roads. A high concentration of hazardous materials in this area. A lot of in infrastructure uh, for the regional good. And a lack of security in that area, too, because of conservation restrictions. So, you know, how are we at the state and local levels going to be able to protect citizens from this compressor station if something goes wrong? Uh, as everyone knows, you know, Columbia Gas uh, recently had, you know, an incident up in Northern Mass in Lawrence uh, and in the Andover area. So, you know, I think that we should look at the lessons learned from, from that experience and, you know, what are we going to do differently here? Um, because again, you know, in that instance, incident, we had a loss of life, homes, um, bur you know, burned, um, and it was absolutely a disaster. Um, so I think it would be good to, um, you know, figure out where we lacked um, in the emergency response protocols in there um, and make sure this time, uh, you know, in this project uh, that we, we got it successful and, and we're protecting people uh, more so. Uh, so really that's, that's the end. Um, so if we could, I'd like to just kind of go around to different um, people, um, you know, within the communities and different departments and voice individual concerns. Okay. Secretary McMurray, any comments you want to make before we start? Uh, I, I appreciate the invite here, and I can assure you that uh, the governor's office um, does not take it lightly. Um, they called over to the executive office of public safety after receiving letters um, and uh, instructed my boss, the secretary, to send me and, and listen and bring back the information. So again, I'm here to listen. I know. Uh, the Lawrence and Andover factor, um, it does weigh heavily on this, but um, this meeting was planned prior to that incident. And I'm sitting next, next to the uh, state fire marshal and Jim Mannion with uh, our emergency management. Uh, we brought them as well. But uh, the fire marshal can attest that, uh, I mean, he spent numerous nights up in Andover uh, in Lawrence. Uh, I, I rushed up there the night it happened spent the night, and uh, it, it's a serious matter. I mean, you, you wonder how it could happen. Overpressurization, human error, however it turns out to be. But uh, So I understand the concerns. I, I cannot make any promises what will happen. But uh, again, I'm here to listen, take it back. And, and uh, so, uh, Far Marshall, do you have anything to say as far as like experience in, in Andover? It's still too early to tell, but uh, it, it was chaos. and. Uh, Everybody rushed up there. The first responders were there immediately. Uh, we have all the relationships between uh, uh, fire, police, EMS, emergency managers. And uh, so if this project is to continue, and I say if, I, I have no idea, plans have to be in place of how to react if an incident does occur. And I, I know that's being done. But uh, so we'll take it one step at a time. I'm going to take all the information, put it in a report, and submit it to the uh, Secretary of Public Safety. And uh, I don't know, Jim, do you have anything to say as well as emergency management and experience? Uh, just that uh, Joan Cooper, Zach, and I were talking um, before the meeting today about what happened up in Lawrence. And you know, we go to a lot of tabletop exercises, and there's always a scenario where you know, there's a pipeline explosion. I've been to a lot of exercises like that. But I think what happened up in Lawrence really, it's you know, usually during an exercise, it's you know, you respond to it. Oh yeah, they turn gas back on, everything's fine. But you know, just what's happening up there really shows that it is a very long-term recovery process. And, 
you know, the nights are starting to get cold, and, but imagine if this happened in December, it would be, you know, we'd be under even more pressure to find housing for all these people that are out of their homes. So, um, you know, exercises help a lot, and actually Weymouth is really one of the best towns, at least in my area that I cover, um, and they regularly do re exercises every, every year or two. Um, so there's a great, you know, response network here, just the LEPC regularly meeting. Um, you know, there's a, there's a great, great base for, for response and emergency planning in Weymouth. And, and I commend the people that are here um, taking their time and, and bringing this issue forward. And I mean, I just moved to Quincy a couple months ago as Bob, uh, I've been friendly with Bob from Quincy PD for many years. And I love the area. I lived here 30 years ago and then just recently came back. So what's going to happen? We'll take it step by step and uh, gather as much information as I can. And again, I'll take it forward and we'll go from there. Thanks. Marshall, did you have anything you wanted to add? Or? Uh, thank you, Chairman. I guess um, I would echo the sentiments of the Undersecretary and, and, and Jim. Um, and I would applaud you, know, um, you for coming together on this emergency planning. The fact of the matter is um, the infrastructure in, in the uh, Lawrence Andover, North Andover area um, ha is a combination of aging infrastructure and uh, newer infrastructure that was uh, undergoing some, um, some construction work. Uh, Weymouth and the area um, is, in the same, is in the same circumstance, uh, and that's certainly the case. So I think it's uh, extremely valuable to uh, have your LEPC active and to have the neighboring communities involved. Uh, as uh, the Undersecretary and, and Mr. Mannion uh, referenced, um, the, the uh, public safety entities have, um, and, and communities through MEMA and the LEPCs have uh, planning opportunities and, and, and take those up and do great work. Uh, and, and I think a, a showcase was in the Merrimack Valley that um, certainly a tragic event but it certainly showed that uh, the planning, the exercises that Jim referred to, they all are very important, and, and I applaud the progress that you're making in that regard. Um, certainly this compressor station um, adds a, a level of complexity that you don't have currently, but I think um, regardless, it's, it's vital for you to continue these uh, and to, for us to have strong relationships um, across the continuum because it did, it was, um, uh, local, state, and federal resources that came to bear in the Merrimack Valley and uh, that are available to us to respond to incidents um, should they occur anywhere in the Commonwealth. So thank you for the opportunity to be here and to hear more. Thank you for coming, Marshal. Chief in the Fire Service Center. I just want to th uh, thank you for being here. Thank Matt putting this PowerPoint together. Can you go back to that slide with the, uh, the first slide with the circle? Um, you know, Weymouth is uh, 21 square miles. Uh, we are, the Weymouth Fire Department does the best we can with what the resources we have. Uh, this is a dense, uh, highly densely populated area, as Matt mentioned. Uh, it's already in a high risk hazard area with the power plant. Uh, there's a McCaptain filling station there, the, the sewage pumping station, the uh, Algonquin uh, gas line runs right through the uh, property of the uh, power plant. And, you know, I, I did some research on the previous gas explosions and, you know, there's one in Pennsylvania back in uh, April of 2016 and it left a 12 foot hole, 1500 square foot hole uh, for, and it scorched 40 acres. So that circle basically represents that area that, you know, if something bad was to happen down there that the uh, Weymouth Fire Department along with uh, Braintree Fire and Quincy Fire that are here, and thank you for being here, and Hingham. Uh, you know, that we would have to respond, uh, police, fire, DPW, all the resources of Weymouth that would have to respond to, and that, to, to this uh, incident if this was to occur. So I think that, um, you know, we need to look at, you know, how would we, how would we afford cost, uh, training, equipment, personnel to respond to an incident like this. I hope that during these, this process that the uh, politicians think of that to help the communities that are surrounded there. You're, you're looking at doing something like this in a community that's in this area that I believe that's already a high hazard area that I think that we should uh, really look at putting it out somewhere that's not going to affect anybody if that's what they need to do to putting a, a compressor station in a community. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Um, 
I have a few uh, comments I'd like to make. Um, has Homeland Security ever looked into what's involved with this? This is going to increase the uh, a target area. Already we have all this um, infrastructure that could be subject to a terrorist attack and putting one more um, large-scale facility down there is almost like we're putting all our eggs in one basket. And I don't know how Homeland Security would um, feel about that or what, what studies they've done uh, on how they raid an area, whether they have a, a, a target area, and then you add another one between, and then another one, and then another one, and then another one. At what point do they stop? It's just loaded with, with high-risk um, things for Homeland Security. Uh, to the best of our knowledge, no one's reached out to the, um, the other facilities there. What are their plans in case this goes up? We've had no input from the other, um, from the power plant, from the uh, Twin Rivers, from Braintree Power Plant, uh, Clean Harbors. We've had none, to best of my knowledge, no input from them at all, no comments at all. And I think that's important. Um, if something should happen down there, what are their emergency plans? How is this going to affect them? Um, where this thing is so close to the MWRA, and that affects, I believe, is five or six uh, towns, um, a major incident down there could really do havoc throughout the South Shore. It's just not that one blast area, uh, or that one area. It could do, uh, uh, create havoc, and start having sewage backflows, and if we're unable to pump, pump the sewage out to Nut Island. Um, <coughs> I'm obviously with the Commonwealth. Um, each state has a Homeland Security Advisor appointed by the governor, and, and I'm it for Massachusetts. So really, my job, one of the things they do is I'm the liaison with DHS, the federal law enforcement. So after this meeting, I'm going to contact the Protective Security, the PSA, Protective Security Advisors, and ask them to contact the different entities and put together a report. So that's a start right there. And they're on the federal side. And, uh, you know, I, I'm sure they he they're hesitant in getting involved, but, but I'm going to tell them that's their job, to help us uh, evaluate the risk. And uh, I'm sure they'll do that. So I'll contact them immediately. Just when we do our NIMS cast, yeah. the, the four of a bridge is right up there at the top. So right. it's kind of a dense area, as the chief mentioned. It's, there's a, it's, it's right up at the top for our NIMS cast advisory for DHS. I don't want to compare apples and oranges, but uh, when I first got this job, uh, uh, the West Roxbury pipeline, uh, they were dealing with that. And the federal judge, and what I learned, had already signed off on everything. And the different groups, I was getting calls constantly. And again, my first response to them was, again, I, like I said earlier, I, I commend people for, for putting their time in and their concern. But that, that project was signed off. And I contacted uh, the feds, and I used to be w with the federal government, a 26-year career. But I figured that they would be happy to come and, and address these issues, but uh, I couldn't get them to come. It was already signed off. They said the judge are. So this, at least, is in the process, earlier process, now where we can get involved, uh, do our due diligence, and uh, put a report together. I mean, again, no promises, but this is, a, this is totally different. So my understanding is. Um, I know certain decisions have already been made, but am I right or wrong to say that there's still time here? I mean, um, yes, still, a, a judge has not signed off. On not this. as of yet. Okay. Well, I understand. Is there any reason why Weymouth? Why that area? Is there any other areas been looked at? Right. What is it about that? It seems like that one basin is a mecca for disaster, <laughs> and it's going to happen at one of these points. Um, Something's going to happen. We've already had an incident down at the metering station. Uh, the chief could probably um, put a little bit uh, more yeah, insight into uh, that yeah. as far as the response, lack of response from the company. Um, I don't know. I just don't know why, why that area, why is it necessary? Why do they pick, pick that? Um, are there any other locations? Uh, we just feel that I think Weymouth and that whole base has been the dumping ground for, um, for uh, infrastructure and I think it's overloaded. There's too many underground pipelines, gas lines, sewer lines, uh, feeding um, Braintree and, and everything, everywhere else. It's just too much there. Yeah, I mean, my guess would be their answer is it's the most convenient place. It's, for them, it's the most logical. But 
looking at it as a risk factor. So, yeah, we'll, we'll put everything together. Appreciate it. Jen, what does it look like from a law enforcement standpoint for a facility down there with the state park right there, the recreation facilities, trying to secure an incident, like an incident if it occurred down there? Jurisdictional issues would come in, obviously, with the Coast Guard and other towns. Quincy, probably from the other side of the bridge. Well, if you look at it, it's, it's an open space. So, it's, like you said, it's, it's definitely a risk factor. And then if something were to happen at the bridge where we're unable to get local agencies like Quincy and, and Braintree to come over from the bridge, where are we going to get our support from? As you notice, any time the bridge goes up, traffic is horrendous when the, when the bridge goes up. They have warning signs letting people know when the bridge is going to go up. So what happens if there's an emergency where the bridge is unable to go down and allow law enforcement and other agencies to come help us? What route are they going to take? And is that route going to be logical and are they going to be fast? Thank you. with you <laughs> <laughs> the recovery piece so um, my name is Joan Kubrzak I'm the emergency preparedness manager at South Shore Hospital I did invite uh, Milton Hospital so thank you for coming today and I do wear two hats so I work as the uh, manager for South Shore Hospital but I also am a representative from the um, Metropolitan Regional Preparedness Coalition which is a healthcare coalition that surrounds Boston and it involves 62 communities and all these communities are in our coalition and the stakeholders in that are EMS, um, hospitals, long-term care, ambulatory, surgical centers, um, and we all work together in a coalition. It's a pretty new coalition. So on my two hats, um, I uh, just talk, think about uh, the fact that Milton Hospital, South Shore Hospital, and Kearney Hospital are the three hospitals that would receive patients. Uh, we are the hospitals that would decon patients. Um, we look at these chemicals. And there's an abundance, a huge abundance of hazards that uh, will impact our communities. Um, and I can't even tell you that I know all the ways that these hazards will affect us. Um, and like Jim said, you know, we do exercises, and yeah, okay, you know, it's a two hour exercise, but when you look at Lawrence, and I followed that that night, and our coalition followed that, do we have to evacuate a hospital? How do we do that? Do we have to look at um, evacuating people with all kinds of functional and access needs? How do we do that? I don't even know. I can't wait to hear more about that area. I wish I wasn't hearing it, but um, you know, so there's so much to this that affects the people that we have in our communities. Um, I have a 400-bed hospital. What does that mean if something happens? I know it's not in that little radius right there, but. Where's the wind going? Where's the chemicals going? You know, what's underground? We got hurricanes, you know, and flooding. What does that mean to us with these chemicals? So we have a lot to learn, and we have a lot of work to do um, to learn more about what these hazards are in our, our communities. So I look forward to hearing more, um, and uh, our concerns. Fantastic. Um, Paul Malone. The town's harbor master trying to hide in the back. Um, certainly, this would affect shipping lanes, the Four River, the commuter boats, oil barge traffic. Yeah, the, uh, that would be a big problem. Wow. You mentioned the Four River Bridge not going down, uh, but it going up. The, the tank is into the Sitco terminal. That's a big problem. And we've had, uh, it's pretty, recently it's been okay, but if anything happens to this pumping station, this compressor, and it, it does cause problems. Like, like Officer Jen said, this could be a big problem for us, law enforcement-wise, and also shipping-wise. There's uh, our, our area, and here in North Weymouth, is the second largest shipping area other than Boston Harbor. And it, there's an awful lot of tankers, tugs, ships, barges, everything's transit back and forth, and a lot of them have to get underneath that bridge. And if they get there, if they're alongside that unit and when it blows, it could cause the main problems with, with, with a huge ship, huge tanker. And they're carrying home heating, home heating oil, diesel fuel, gasoline. I'm worried about that also. And then evacuation of people. She mentioned people evacuation on that peninsula. It'll have to be done by water, by waterways. Can we get close enough to get them off, off the beach? We don't know that. So 
if it's dangerous, I don't want it. And it sounds like it's dangerous to me. <laughs> Listen to the, the slides here. Um, I hope it never, if it is coming, I hope it never has a problem, but I, I don't like the idea because of all the infrastructure around it and what could happen. But the shipping is a big problem. Shipping is a major, major, major concern here, economic-wise, people-wise, uh, home heating oil, winter's coming soon, if it goes up every winter, not just winter, every winter. So I uh, hopefully uh, we'll do the right thing. Do you know if the Coast Guard Port Area Committee's done anything in regards to this? Uh, Coast Guard? I don't know. I could find out from the, uh, the, from the captain of the port what he says about this problem, but I'm sure he doesn't like it either. Um, he just came aboard recently as a new uh, captain of the port. Uh, I'm sure that he has his concerns about it also. Um, maybe Lieutenant Gillen has more on that, but I'll, I'll, I'll double check with that. Uh, shipping is a big thing, and it's going to affect it. No doubt in my mind. Thanks, thanks, Paul. Department of Public Works, you've got sewer, water, roadways, <laughs> trash. It's a long list for sure. Uh, I, I want to make a quick comment, um, maybe related, maybe not related. Maybe, Marsha, uh, you might follow up behind me. But I, I know that part of the legal argument, pros and cons, uh, in this regard, uh, spoke to the leaks that were in town. And um, Mayor Hedlund's administration particularly was aggressive with the gas company in pursuing repairs to gas leaks um, You know, since he's been in town. We had some 600 uh, at the time, and we've dwindled that down to almost none currently. However. Uh, this past year, um, this construction season, National Grid's been on strike. Uh, so we've, we've taken a big back step in aggressively going after our leaks in town. We're only handling grade one emergencies. Um, so if part of the argument is the need for increased volumes and pressures and things like that, then our leaks should be fixed uh, and, and continually and aggressively pursued and repaired. Uh, so that's been an issue this past summer, and I think that should be a forefront in, in the attention. Health, Dan. Thank you very much for being here today. I think since day one, um, when this proposal was brought to us, we've all agreed that this isn't the right location for a facility of this capacity with these type of hazards. In addition to the hazards that Matt has spoken about today, uh, there are other health concerns associated with this project uh, that are currently being addressed under a health impact assessment. Uh, town representatives, as well as a lot of community residents in all of the surrounding communities have spent a lot of time uh, telling state representatives and federal officials that this is not the right location for this. There's too many other hazards associated with it. There's too many residents in the direct area and too many other receptors. That this is not the right location. So again, we hope that you bring all this information back to the secretary and the mayor uh, and the governor and let him know that this really is not the right location for this compressor station. Let's put it somewhere else where there's less hazardous components, materials, and human receptors, please. Thank you. Anyone else on the uh, LEPC have anything they want to add before I open it to the other towns? Uh, we have some guests from other towns. Hingham, anything you'd like to add to the discussion? You'd be seriously impacted, obviously, with traffic. I think the, uh, the biggest thing from a Hingham perspective is kind of echoing what Chief Stark said, uh, that you know, you're dealing with an area that is truly isolated up here if you lose the bridge. You're going to lose support coming in from the north to come down and assist, which means that the, you know, specifically Quincy and Braintree Fire Departments, Quincy and Braintree Police Departments are going to have to come through Weymouth uh, via other routes to access this site. Um, so, you know, you're going to really kind of delay your responses for mutual aid. Um, and in certain cases, they may be dealing with issues on their side of the bridge anyway, so they may not even be available. So I definitely have to e echo what um, Chief Stark said, that you know the current infrastructure would have a difficult time responding to something like this without more equipment, more training, uh, more staffing, everything else. This is a big, big problem. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Quincy? Hello, 
Hello, folks. My name is uh, Bob Gillen, Lieutenant Quincy Police Marine Unit. All I can really do is uh, mirror the concerns of the first responders. Uh, we're looking forward to see some serious response plans. If the project goes forward, we'll be working with the Coast Guard, the Area Maritime Security Committee. The bridge is a huge concern, not just for the maritime, but for our ability to get response to Quincy or to respond to other communities. So I don't have much more to add other than I support the uh, concerns of the first responders. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Braintree. I can just say a quick word. Uh, Chief Stocker, I have talked uh, previously in the fall, and uh, I have a little sentiments uh, to it. Thank you. Are there other, is there another town down there that I didn't recognize? No, Braintree. Yeah, Braintree, okay. Uh, Braintree Police have anything they may want to add, or the Chief say it all for you? Thank you very much. Um, anyone else have anything to add? Uh, Secretary, anything else you want to? No, I'll go back to Lawrence and Andover again because I was actually there witnessing it. And without a doubt, the first responders will be there. So if there's an incident, and I'm not going to speculate that this, is this project's going to go through, but if it did, um, we're going to have to have a good security plan in place, emergency plan. But back to Andover, I, I was in the trailer and watched as the governor made the decision to declare a state of emergency. So it's a big deal. And uh, again, the first responders did their jobs. But that doesn't, I mean, all these people that are out of their homes, homes damaged, the young gentleman who died. Uh, so we all hope that Andover did not happen, but it did. And, and Lawrence, it, it did happen, so we can use that as we should. And uh, so again, any information that I can get and compile of all the concerns, uh, please forward to me, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, again, I thanks, thank you for the invite. And, and the governor's office, and, and this isn't for me to put in a, a you know, positive note for the governor, but again, it's, as a first responder, it's a pleasure working for this administration because they do listen. This isn't just, you know, I'll send out an undersecretary and humor people. So, again, I can promise you we'll put something together and you can continue doing what you're doing, your research, whatever you can to forward to me. And uh, I can just say we'll take it from there. And, uh, you know, the what ifs, the concerns, uh, just send them to me. Okay. John? Yes. I'd like to make a motion, if possible that we uh, invite the uh, representative from their company to come down to the LEPC and actually make a presentation to maybe give us a little bit more first-hand information rather than us have to dig for the information. They should be forthcoming and bringing the information to us. Yeah. Um, and I think if we could get somebody down there, whether we can or not, it's a different situation. I'd like to make a motion that we invite them and set a date for that. Yeah, we have a motion on the floor to invite the company to sit before the LEPC. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, so motion to second it. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, we'll work through the mayor's office. We'll invite um, the company. Actually, we could do it through the LEPC. We have the jurisdiction. Um, we'll invite the uh, company down and maybe National Grid Gas as well and have them appear before us and let them. Give it us might be plan. worthwhile too, to contact some of the other um, um, facilities in the area and see what they want to come down and. Okay, yeah, we can do that. Or okay. maybe another, another time. I do that at a different meeting, so we're not all together. Okay, thank you, John. Um, Mary, anything from Representative Murphy's office? This is not a public hearing, but we will allow um, people from the, the audience if they wish to speak briefly. Again, this is a public safety meeting and not, um, you know, an anti-compressor station meeting. But if anyone has anything they'd like to, to say, we'll, we'll allow people from the floor to speak briefly. Yes, please. And we'll, we'll need your name. Yeah. 
My name is Alice Arena, and I live on 6 Blueberry Street in Weymouth. Um, and I am obviously a concerned citizen, but I believe, uh, Secretary McMurray, you asked or someone brought up, did they have other locations that they could have placed this? And so I want you to know that the Energy Facilities Siting Board posted probably seven letters on the FERC docket in regards to this project and the project that's coming right in behind it, the Access Northeast. So these seven locations, they were in, some of them really weren't great locations. There were a couple, uh, I believe one in Franklin that was on 40 acres of land. But in the first iterations of this project, they actually had the compressor in Rehoboth. Again, a, a lot of land, much, there aren't the facilities that we have here in the basin. Um, and they discounted all of those locations because they didn't want to put in extra pipe. But the bottom line is that with Rehoboth, that compressor station comes back in the access northeast. So they had a location that they were going to originally put this, and then they put that back again in another project. So I just wanted to make sure that you knew that there were other locations that the company themselves said were suitable or they could look at. It wasn't just that they could have this one location. But again, very interesting to note that the Commonwealth Energy Facility Siting Board said this was not the place to put it. Okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Anyone? Yes, sir. Hello, my name is Michael Lang. I'm uh, the environmental coordinator for the East Braintree Civic Association. And I've been addressing environmental issues in the basin for 45 years. So I pretty much know what's happening in the area. Um, the material that Matt gave you is, um, is, is material that actually Spectra had given him and given all the regulators and everything. And it's not really accurate. You have the incinerator, that's called the incineration zone, by the way, which means that all those people on the bridge will be incinerated. Um, and the actual distance is 1,000 feet, not 786 feet. And by the way, they're also talking about this one compressor here, but they've made it known that there's actually another compressor that's co coming in right after this compressor. It, once these get, this gets permitted, there'll be an actually bigger compressor coming in. And by the way, all this gas is going to Canada to be exported as LNG. Um, so I, I'd, be, um, I'd be willing to sit down and talk to you folks. I'm really interested. I tried to talk to the, um, the Braintree fire chiefs and told him, I, I talked to your hazmat guy and said, you folks don't understand what you're going to be walking into. This is going to be a huge fire. When I first uh, commented on this, um, this project, I gave them my worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is the bridge is up, it's rush hour, there's a 12, the bridge is being built for 1,200 foot tankers, by the way, post Panamax tankers. So you got a 1,200 foot tanker full of gasoline going under the bridge and there's an explosion and the, the bridge is loaded with commuters and the bridge will be taken down, the um, pump station will be gone, Twin Rivers will be gone and by the way, it'll work its way down the, uh, down the lift you know, Quirk and then the shipyard and all the rest of those people. But you folks really don't understand this project. If you go completely by what's written by um, Spectra, you, you're getting a false image. And I, I had given you a package. I, I, Matt was going to pass it down to you. I hope you read it. And I'd be glad to sit down and give you the accurate data on it. By the way, we also have some really good people working with us. We have some top officials in the health department. Uh, top officials in ear, ear monitoring, and we've come up with totally different data than they have. So um, I'd be willing to share it with you uh, anytime. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? 
I, I, Frank Singleton, <clears throat> Weymouth Conservation Commission, but I'm also on this, uh, the Health Impact Study and on the uh, advisory board with the citizens. I uh, just want to make it clear, we have actually met with the captain of the port. She's now left and has been replaced by another uh, assignment. Uh, we didn't get very far, but there is a committee, a safety committee that she was supposed to set up a meeting with. We have met with the MWRA advisory board. Basically, their executive director brushed it off. He told me in a direct quote, I don't have a dog in this fight even though when we finally got the site plans recently from Spectra uh, or Enbridge, uh, they've now built uh, the compressor station right against the fence line adjacent to the 60-inch uh, sewer pipeline that feeds 14 South Shore communities. So I concur there's a whole bunch of issues that we really need to look at with the safety uh, group, but every safety group we've met with, including a letter or uh, a request to MW, I'm sorry, uh, uh, the Mass Emergency uh, uh, Association, et cetera, has been brushed aside as safety is somebody else's responsibility. So I'm glad to see we're finally focusing on there's a whole bunch of stuff down here that needs to be looked at. As Conservation Commission, I'm also concerned with, uh, are they going to now ban public access because of security reasons? But the security down there right now is a joke. Uh, we actually have a picture of a bicycle lock on the main gate. A bicycle lock. Uh, there's no staffing down there, and, there, and uh, we've been down there numerous times looking at things. Recently, Mike and I were there for other reasons, looking at a drainage swale. Um, normally, you'd have a security car pull up. Who are these two guys taking photographs and wandering around these premises outside the gate line? Nobody showed up because nobody's watching. So I think there's a whole bunch of issues here that have been somewhat vetted by the citizens group, but needs to be vetted more uh, and intensely by uh, uh, the state. Uh, and I could add a final comment that there was a major request for a clean harbors incinerator years ago that was finally denied by the state based on safety issues, and one of the major reasons, and not just safety issues uh, from the point of view of pollution, but because there was no evacuation possible if, in fact, that uh, thing had uh, gone into a, a negative issue. So I think there's a number of issues we'd like to submit on what we've been trying to do, knocking on doors and not getting very far on the issue of public safety and see whether or not uh, this group and others like it can uh, help uh, raise these issues, because it'll have to burn out all the way from Salem that's what the shutoff would be. So you're going to end up with basically a blowtorch going on for uh, for quite a long time. Uh, you're going to have to put a perimeter and just let it go. Number two, uh, if you look at what happened in Atlanta with a major fire under an interstate about a year ago where the interstate collapsed, uh, Columbia Gas had an episode on uh, in 2012, a similar one, where they also collapsed an interstate uh, by weakening the concrete with the fire under the bridge because the fire had to burn out. And while the steel may not melt, the concrete is extremely susceptible, uh, plus the control tower for the bridge. You can't have anybody in there putting the bridge up and down and all the electronics will be fried. So there's a whole bunch of issues that, on public safety that really need to be fleshed out. So I'm glad to see that you're going to accept hopefully some specific comments on this, that we can document some of these concerns and see if there could be more uh, specificity on uh, uh, some sort of uh, uh, public safety position rather than it's not in our bailiwick, it's not in our wheelhouse, it's somebody else's problem. Uh, thank you. I mean, if this project was to continue, um, it's just another site that security has to worry about. Um, we did a tabletop exercise with the governor and uh, lieutenant governor yesterday in the cabinet level. There's a big, huge exercise, uh, Vigilant Guard, coming up in November. That's a five-day uh, actual out-in-the-field scenarios. Um, and uh, so yesterday's tabletop, uh, it, it kind of relates to this in many ways because the lieutenant governor turned around to me and said, where are we vulnerable? I, I, I couldn't begin. I mean, because once a site like this is in place, the feds authorize it and it goes forward. Now it's up to the local municipalities to put a plan into place. So for me to answer the lieutenant governor's question, like every bridge, every tunnel, every gas compressor station, I mean, this is just going to be one more added on. And uh, so the concerns are there. We're constantly training. but. Training is only for after an incident happens, but emergency management, they do what they do. So again, thank you. We're going to keep compiling everything we can, but we got to make sure what we're putting down on paper, which is not just total speculation, it's facts, because we're going against you know, pretty 
powerful gas company. So, and everybody needs gas. We all know that. Um, but again, thanks. Appreciate okay. it. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, it's uh, we try to limit our meetings to a, to an hour if we can. I think pretty much a lot has been said. If I could get you to generate some data with bullet points and the gentleman from East Braintree, if you could do the same for us, that would be good. Can I just make one last comment? Yeah, make it about 30 we're, seconds. Yeah, we've researched this, and FERC has taken the position that they don't address safety. PIMSHA, the pipeline safety people, yeah. don't address safety until after the pipeline is built and running. Yeah. So you got nobody running, nobody looking at safety issues. Right. We're, look, we're looking at safety now, so. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll entertain any motions to adjourn. I think there's one more person that one wants more to question. say something. One more question. Quick, if we could. Hi, I will, I will make it quick. Jennifer Mathian, 159 Stainer Drive in Hingham, president of the Hingham Residents Against the Compressor Station, also a member of the Health Impact Assessment Advisory Board. And I just wanted to make a note that fracked gas infrastructure needs to be cited in a way that mitigates the risks of safety, health, and economy to all of the surrounding communities. And certainly, this proposal does the opposite of that. And thank you so much to all of the local emergency responders for being here and working on a plan. And I guess my question is, do we need to risk our local emergency responders to a proposal that that doesn't benefit us, that doesn't need to be here. Um, in addition, it's very important to note that this would be a site remotely operated by, um, from Texas. So um, as you had mentioned, there, there was a leak in, in the past and it was, um, it was actually a local Weymouth um, constituent who notified the LEPC of the leak, not the company itself. So there's been a, a history of negligence, uh, never mind the worst case scenario, which we certainly have to prepare for, but also smaller, dangerous situations that, that we in surrounding communities need to work together and put our resources and put our LEPC on the line for um, when there's no, no benefit to us. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, we're going to conclude. If, if I could get a yes. Sorry, just one more thing about yes, sir. Uh, tomorrow at 2.18, everybody's phone is going to go off because FEMA and the FCC is doing a test of the emergency alert system and the wireless emergency alert system. Uh, so just be prepared. Just, you know, tell other people around you. I feel they were supposed to do this October 3rd. It got a lot of press then, but with Hurricane Florence, it got canceled. I feel like there was more press then than there is now. So please tell your friends, tell your family. Uh, it's just a test. 2.18. Thank you very much. Any motions to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second the motion. Second. We're adjourned. Well, thank everyone for coming. There's refreshments over there. We'll hang around.